setup is so cute that I'm like, this setup is cute. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Raven and this is Raven Reviews. Get it? Rave in reviews. Kind of cute? Kind of. <laughs> I would love to geek out and review TV shows. I watch a lot of content, like a lot of content. I always have, but it's probably gotten worse in quarantine. I'm like itching and looking for it. Like that Dave Chappelle meme. <laughs> yeah, that's me with the content right now in quarantine. And let me tell you, there's not enough. However, we were blessed. <laughs> and when I say blessed, we were blessed this February when Disney decided to release Brandy Cinderella onto Disney Plus. Brandy Cinderella was a pivotal moment in the 1990s. Like, I'm apparently old now um, and I can't wear side part skinny jeans or use the laughy cry emoji. I don't really do the first two, but that laughy cry emoji, I'm not giving that up. No. I don't care if I'm old, I'm going to use a laughy cry emoji. Brandy Cinderella is actually Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella, but I so fondly call it Brandy Cinderella, I have all my life, I'm not going to change, they're one and the same. Brandy Cinderella was created by Rogers and Hammerstein, they were a composer duo from the 1940s and 50s, um, made up of Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein II, and they made popular Broadway shows such as Oklahoma and The Sound of Music. And this version of the Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella, Brandy Cinderella, debuted on The Wonderful World of Disney on November 2nd, 1997. Excuse my plan, it's kind of, it needs some help. I moved it and hopefully it'll do well here. I don't know if you can really tell on the camera, but it's a little dry. So I watered it. Hopefully it gets better light. Maybe we'll like see its little road to recovery on this channel. Who knows? Let's hop back into the movie. So the movie opens with the queen, Whitney Houston. And let me tell you, she's stunning from the jump. Like stunning. Beautiful. I love all the little hand-drawn squiggles and swirls around her that are like falling down around her to like show off like the magic kind of like fairy dust. I like it. It's really pretty and it's just really giving me like 90s ethereal. And the opening credits appear and I love that they are in alphabetical order because it gives the appearance um, to me at least that all of the cast members are equal. No one cast member is, you know, considered a higher pull or whatever than the others. Everyone's equal when we do it in alphabetical order, so that's nice. We open up in the town shopping center, the, like the marketplace, and this is where we meet Cinderella, very anti Cinderella, for the first time. She is shopping with her stepsisters who are fighting over this really ugly hat, and they decide, let's ask Cinderella for her opinion, and she comes with the most ruthless I mean, ruthless answer. She says, I don't think it flatters either one of you. Ruthless. <laughs> ruthless. Honest, but ruthless. The stepsisters get upset and they run off to the stepmother to, you know, get a second opinion. They ended up just like splitting the hat, which was really funny. Cinderella's off walking the streets and she sees a puppet show. It's very Hunchback of Notre Dame-esque and the show, the puppet show, is about a prince that meets his bride. So it's kind of like foreshadowing. I mean, not like we need a foreshadow. We've seen Cinderella and we know the story, but like foreshadowing the story of what we are about to see. And it's kind of like a direct message <laughs> to her from the universe. Like, hey girl, I hope you checked your horoscope today. You might have some chance encounters. I don't know. Look cute. I hope she checked her horoscope. She meets the prince that day, lucky her. Not so lucky because she almost gets trampled by the royal horses and he saves her. He's like, makes a joke about, you know, the royals, you know, they're always in a rush and she's like, whatever man, thanks. <laughs> Can you help me pick up these hats? He's just hooked right away from the jump. I mean like, 
is Brandy. <laughs> Why wouldn't you be hooked? He's just like, girl, what I gotta do for your number? And Cinderella's just like, okay, bye. I literally just met you. It's a little weird. Um, you're being a little bit much. And the prince is over here speaking in like hypotheticals and Cinderella is basically like, hypothetically, should you have a woman, you probably wouldn't even know what to do with her. Again, ruthless. <laughs> She's ruthless. Uh, and the prince tells her that, you know, I, I know what to do with a girl. I believe that a girl should be treated like a princess. You know, maybe for like some girls that would have been, that would have been like a good enough answer. But for Cinderella, she says, you know, girls are supposed to be treated with kindness and respect. And if you're not going to treat me with kindness and respect, you need to try again. They ultimately end up bonding over, you know, hating their lives. Because don't we all? Yeah, and they go their separate ways. So they meet. <laughs> He's a little much, she's not really interested. He's like, it's okay, boo, I'ma see you again. And she's like, please leave me alone. The opening song is beautiful. Also, don't drink every time I say beautiful, I'm going to say it a lot of times. It's a beautiful song. It's one of three new songs that were added just for this film. They wanted to give the stars of the film uh, more opportunity to showcase their skills so I'm glad that they added those songs. This song, The Sweetest Sounds, was added. It's when Cinderella and the prince first meet and they're dreaming of finding a love that will, you know, rescue them from their everyday mundane life. The other two songs that were added were Falling in Love with Love, sang by the stepmother Bernadette Peters, and There's Music in You, sang by Whitney Houston. It's the finale song. So we get to the prince's castle and we meet his, I guess you call him like his nanny, Lionel. And Lionel is a mess. Lionel says that he would rather be trampled by a carriage than have to deal with the prince's shenanigans. And I'm just like, can we get Lionel? a day off Lionel needs a day off maybe even like a week let's let's get someone find Lionel a week off because he would rather be trampled by a carriage than have to deal with his prince how bad is the prince <laughs> Brandy do you really want this man let's consider and we get to see at this point in the film the infamous colorblind casting that is the royal family we have black mom plus white dad equals Filipino baby. Hmm? I mean, so like he's caramel, so like I guess it's kind of a reach, but I mean, either way, it really doesn't matter. I love it. I just think that it just showcases that you can just really cast the perfect fit for the role and it really doesn't matter and I just, I love it. It's beautiful. All that matters is Queen Whoopi. Queen Whoopi, that's a tweet. <laughs> she's just so dramatic and I just, I just love it. It just feels like a theater, you know? She's just, she's just acting. She's dragging and she's, oh, everything's so marvelous. Queen Whoopi. Queen Whoopi would like to host a ball so that her son can, you know, find a wife and get up out her house. <laughs> and if Lionel is about to have a heart failure and about to throw himself in front of the carriage, I can see why Whoopi would like her son to be married and out her house. But as the prince just fell in love with the marketplace with this young Cinderella girl, he's just, he's just, he's just not interested. You know, he like, the prince would rather find love and choose his bride his own way but Queen Whoopi is not about to have that not today she says she says there will be a ball babe cue the prince is giving a ball and this song is giving me the name game from AHS Asylum let me know if you are aware of that episode it's just all the names it feels like the name game it feels like Lana Fana Fofana FIFA Fofana whatever you know the deal. It's also just giving me like Broadway in general. I just really love musical theater and just musicals and like musicals on screen like in like a big like movie production like setting so I just I just really like that and like I totally get it. If people don't like this I can see how it could be a little bit much but just it, the dance numbers 
it just it just makes me like the sets like all of it it's just it just makes me really excited for the little mermaid and just to see what like the town sets and scenes will look like for that so i'm really excited to see that by the end of the song lionel is just naming names the prince is having a ball you go find your wife and get out whoopi's house so we get back to cinderella with her sisters and her sisters cannot even open the door or her like stepmom they can't even open the door without her they get to the door and they just turn around and look at her and she's like oh i mean girl you knew you had to open the door but like and she can't even get inside good enough before they're like, Cinderella do this, Cinderella do that, Cinderella do this. And she's just like, can I even get inside and wash my hands? And they're talking about the ball, word gets around that the prince is having a ball. And, you know, evil stepmother says, you know what, Cinderella, you can't go to that ball. And Cinderella is sad. She starts singing the song, In My Own Little Corner where she is basically singing about escapism and just wanting to get away to just be someone else and just live another life because her life sucks. This song just proves to me that Brandy is just a true princess. Like her vocals, the beauty, true princess vibes. So we have In My Own Little Corner reprise after that and I just love a good reprise. She's just ready to be for for her life to get shaken up and as she's wishing that she could just go to the ball and you know live a happy life oop pops who her fairy godmother miss whitney houston and she came with a message not only did she pop up she popped up with a message for all of us she says if you want to get out of here you're going to have to do it yourself the music is in you deep down in your soul when you find it, nothing will be able to keep you from walking out that door. That's the problem with most people. They dream about what they really want to do instead of just doing it. You don't have to read us like that. Thank you. <laughs> Impossible starts to play. My favorite transformation of any Cinderella movie, Whitney, Brandy, singing that song together. It's just, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. It's beautiful and at this point in the movie I'm thinking what's different about this movie and the like animated one and I realized we don't have any mice <laughs> thank you thank you because if you've watched the animated Cinderella you will know that the majority of the movie is the mice it's a mouse story it's Mickey and friends plus Cinderella but thankfully this movie doesn't have the mice Brandy transforms into her beautiful blue dress. We get floating Whitney. Like she was really floating, she was just floating. Half of her body was gone. She was like a ghost, a spirit really. And Brandy's about to go get her man. Good luck, Brandy. So we get to the ball and the costumes are just as colorful as the cast. Brandy Cinderella was Bridgerton before Bridgerton was Bridgerton. And the blues and the purples in this ballroom scene are really giving me that last ball in Bridgerton where they're like dancing in the rain and like kissing and he realizes that like he can you know father her kids because he married her and that's kind of like what you have to do in like that time I guess why marry her um so yeah it's really Bridgerton to me and I wonder where they got that idea I'm not saying they got it from Brandy Cinderella but I'm saying that Brandy Cinderella did it first nothing wrong with that it's beautiful it's beautiful Please don't drink every time I say beautiful. So we get the prince, the prince is dancing. It's Minerva's time, one of her stepsisters to go dance with him. And earlier in the day, we learned that Minerva scratches when she's nervous and Calliope, the other sister, like giggles a lot. So Minerva's out here dancing with the prince. Girl, not you out here scratching and itching when you're dancing with the prince. <laughs> Keep it together. It's your time. You only got a couple seconds with this man. You out here itching. That was not gonna work out. And the prince is just, he's kind of fed up with it. So he's like, can we speed this? Sh <laughs> can we speed it up? Can we speed it up? I got fettuccine in the fridge and I would like to eat it. Cinderella arrives at the ball and her fairy godmother informs her, you have until 12 o'clock before this magic runs out. And Cinderella looks at the clock and she has exactly 45 minutes to go secure her bag and she's like say less she's off to go get her man and she appears at the top of the stairs and the music stops heads snap in her direction the prince sees her 
and within seconds they're dancing. Have you ever seen somebody so fine that you just started dancing? You saw her and you just had to dance. So they're waltzing and it's beautiful and there's blues and purples and it's gorgeous and they're singing. And even his daddy <laughs> wants her. His dad says to his wife, Queen Whoopi, he says, if only I were younger. And she says, hmm, really, would you like to elaborate on that? And he goes, you know, I would be younger. And she's like, yes, thank you for catching yourself before I had to, because you don't want me to catch you. The prince is just trying to figure out where he has seen her before. And he asks her, oh, have I seen you like at the lake? Like, where have I seen you? And she's like, no, I don't swim. I'm just like, hmm. Sigh, can we normalize black people swimming, please? Thank you. The waltz 10 minutes ago I met you song is probably one of my favorite Disney couple songs. Let me know what your favorite Disney couple song is down below in the comments. It's beautiful. The choreography, the blues, the purples, beautiful. The lift running cross section in the dance, beautiful. The transition outside with the dancers on the second story waltzing, it's beautiful. It's also beautiful. Please don't drink every time I say beautiful. So Cinderella's out there with her man and the stepsister. They're ready to break her arm and pull out her hair verbatim. And Queen Whoopi is just enthralled with her. Queen Whoopi asks her, so tell me about your family. Cinderella gets really shy and nervous so she ain't got no family and her crazy stepmother and stepsisters are there and she don't want nothing to do with them. So she runs outside and she's ready to leave. Fairy godmother has to save the day one last time. She talks some sense into her and she sends her back in where we have another duet. Do I love you because you're beautiful? It's, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. They kiss, it's passionate, I feel it. Like the movie could stop there, but no. There's more. As in every Cinderella story, the clock strikes 12. Cinderella has to run out of the party like I did when the COVID um, stay at home order lifted in California and I just really had to get my nails done. That was me, Cinderella running down the stairs, me running down my stairs to get to the nail salon. Same vibe. Funny thing about this version is, is that her magic legitimately like runs out before she even gets down the stairs. And all that's left is of course the slipper. So she has to walk home with one shoe in her rags all the way home. What I liked about the ending of it is that they had their faces framed and it really felt like a stage so you would have like the actors like in spotlights. Cinderella made it home and her family arrives and they're straight capping about what happened at the ball. <laughs> like they had this grand old time. The prince was vibing with them. He was feeling them. He was ready to marry one of them. And Cinderella's just like, hmm, that sounds too good to be true again. Another ruthless moment from a real princess. She goes on to kind of like guess what happened at the ball. Her family is like, how you know? How you, how do you know all this information? She's like, oh, <laughs> if I, I were there. I just per <laughs> this is what I would presume <laughs> would be happening. I, I wasn't there. She, she's running her mouth a little bit too much. She's a little too excited. Tone it down, big girl, before you get yourself caught. She's talking too much. They don't need to know your business like that. Okay, keep it cool. Keep it cute. The stepmother ends up calling Cinderella a comment and saying that the prince would never want to be with you. And that was honestly the straw that broke Cinderella's back. With that, she was done. She was out of there. You ain't gonna call me common because I'm not common, okay? I'm gone. And Whitney gives her the last little bit of peace that she needs. And she asks Cinderella, do you think he fell in love with your fancy gown and your pretty braids. And on that note, on the braids, I'm gonna go into a little tangent about braids. Her having braids was so crucial. It was so important. It was just, I mean, that was like her look anyways, I feel like then, and you know, it just, it just transferred over into the character. The braids were it, like that was whole, the part of the whole like thing, her outfit was made because of the braids. And I just, I love the braids. I did like what everyone else did. I feel like in quarantine that was cut their hair. At the time it was kind of impulsive. I kind of underestimated how badly I would want braids. <laughs> you know, this movie came out and I would really want braids again. And I can't wait for my hair to grow out. I am predicting that braids with beads are gonna be a thing. I've already seen some people with them. Um, just like in the 90s when you had your braids, you had your beads, it was popping. You would just 
with their hair all day I'm ready for it so the summer I'm hoping you know come May my hair is long enough I'm gonna get some braids and I'm gonna get some beads and I'm gonna be all day end of my quick tangent one thing that i do a lot with movies that i like is watch all the interviews it's kind of to me like you know how you get a dvd and watch all the like behind the scenes things that's what i would do so that's what i do now just on youtube and in one of the interviews that the cast did Whoopi said that she was originally or was like in the beginning stages considered to be the fairy godmother but she felt like she didn't have the vocals like that but in this movie she does serve a little vocals. Don't underestimate yourself, whoop. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Did I call her whoop? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like I know her. <laughs> and so we're finally to the point where we're trying on shoes. The prince is trying to find his princess. He says, stick your foot in this shoe. I just really like the stocking choices that they had. You know, some people didn't have stockings and that was nasty. Um, they should have just given them one of those little like try on socks because like don't stick your dirty like barefoot in this shoe when everyone's trying it on that's nasty but the people that did have stockings they had really cool designs why are we wasting his time cinderella's back at home in the kitchen and she is got a bag and she is packing her rags she is packing her rags and she is ready to go she is done with his family she's getting out of here and the stepmother sees her and at that time the princess finally showed up to their house so she's like mm -mm, girl <laughs> you think you've got to go somewhere you ain't locks the kitchen door the prince arrives and after he's done with the step family shenanigans because they definitely don't have the fee for that shoe he finally sees that they're trying to hide that there's someone behind the door he gets into the kitchen and cinderella is gone girl can you wait your man is here just, just wait on it sometimes you just have to wait and the universe will deliver god will deliver to your doorstep whatever you believe in it will deliver to your doorstep if you just got to be patient sometimes you know you got to put in the work and you got to be patient he was right there she should have just waited but he finds her outside and she's almost getting trampled again by horses because that's kind of her thing so yeah he remembers her this time she tries on this shoe it's a perfect fit the cinderella story she secures her bag congratulations girl you did it cue the wedding montage and let me tell you the costumes for the wedding montage the whites the golds it was it was classic it was, it was, it was, of, a, it was of the millennia it's beautiful beautiful truly floating Whitney at the end great happy ending everyone is happy so with that being said that's the end of our little recap of Cinderella as of right now it's currently not on the Disney plus princesses sub section like when you go to search and you like go to princesses and they have like all the princesses movies there it's not there um currently uh it's been like a week Disney I'm gonna need you to add that on there if Anastasia is there so should Brandy Cinderella. I mean, Anastasia is not Disney. So like, why is it there in the first place? What's another story? Let's add Brandy Cinderella to the mix. Thank you. I'm very excited that it's on Disney Plus now. I will be watching it or having it just play in the background all the time um, while I'm working from home. One, I was very surprised that it wasn't on Disney Plus in the beginning. I think it might've had something to do with like rights or whatever, whoever owned it, but it wasn't there in the beginning, which is annoying. But now it's here so i'm happy uh and yeah if you are a disney fan or anything like that you would know that we are getting i mentioned in the video uh, a little mermaid live action and it's going to be starring hallie bailey from chloe and hallie um in Grownish. and there was a little bit of controversy surrounding her casting and i didn't really quite get it because like it's already been done and it's been done very well but i guess people just don't know about this movie i guess i don't know how you don't know about this movie you must not have been born then or you were living under a rock maybe i don't know this allowing for representation has been done before and it's been done very well people of all cultures of all backgrounds can see black women in the light of the of a lead of a princess of just royalty of beauty of elegance i think it's important for society as a whole collective to see representation of all cultures and like the slogan representation matters i think is super lame but like it's really real and like it does matter and it does like make an impact on people's lives like i got to grow up as a confident kid because i saw myself in a princess lead 
you know? Like, before, all I had was, like, Mulan and... Well, Mulan wasn't out yet, but, like, all I had was, like, Pocahontas and, like, Mulan. And then I had, like, Brandy Cinderella and then, like, Tiana came later. And I just think that it's important for kids and their parents as well, because most of the times it's the parents' problem. I encourage you to watch it. And thank you so much for joining me today. Bye. Okay, so you stayed this long. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> I hope it wasn't awful. I really procrastinated on this. And yeah, I mean, I didn't really have like a deadline to put it out, but like I, as a procrastinator, like made a deadline for myself. Um, so I hope I get it out by tomorrow is the deadline. Well, I guess technically it's today because it's like midnight um, when I'm filming this. It's probably like one o'clock. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I kind of just wanted to do the like this kind of like candid moment like at the end of my videos to, I don't know, kind of show a little bit of my personality. Um, if I didn't do that enough in the video, I, I tried to ham it up a little bit um but yeah I just kind of want to like to do this like I don't know if people actually eventually watch this and like get a little taste of who I am that could be cool but yeah I just wanted to like kind of talk really quickly about like showing up for yourself like there's like the quote in in the movie that I highlighted from the fairy godmother and it's like the only thing stopping you from walking out that door is you like you have everything within you that you need to walk out the door. So like whenever you decide to like listen to what's inside of you or like acknowledge what's inside of you, you can go out the door and nothing's gonna stop you. So I just like, I don't know. Like I said, I'm a procrastinator and I just feel like I've been like procrastinating on like just like life in general and I should just like kind of just get out there and do things and like stop making excuses so that's what I'm doing and that's why I did this little like video log, I guess, vlog. <laughs> this little vlog at the end to kind of just like have for myself maybe and like maybe other people if you watched it but like really mostly for myself just to kind of like hold myself accountable. And I hope that like I can watch this back and watch this first video because I know it's not going to be as good as like I would like it to be because I procrastinated on it and I just really want to get it out. Um, I hope that I can watch it again in the future and just really look back on it and be like, wow, if only you would have started that project like five days earlier, you know, but it turned out well and I'll grow. But yeah, you know, I think, I think it'll be really cute to like look back on this and like be like, girl, wow, your setup wasn't that cute. I mean, my, I think my setup is pretty freaking cute if you ask me, like. I kind of finessed it. I kind of finessed it. But yeah, that's all. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.